Hi friends, welcome to the course on entrepreneurship session. In this session, we will concentrate on testing, validation and commercialization of uh, prototypes and products. Just to recap, we have considered uh, five stages of uh, product development for an entrepreneurial firm. We said that it starts with ideation, which also includes the phase of uh, empathy and design. The second stage is uh, prototyping, third, is, third phase is uh, testing fourth phase is validation and the fifth phase is commercialization. In this session, we will talk about uh, three things together, testing, validation and commercialization. Obviously, like every other step, each step is uh, closely intertwined with the other step or even steps before that. Uh, the issue is that each step has to be performed uh, seamlessly, iteratively and appropriately for the step we are considering to be very effective and efficient. So, let us consider the importance of uh, testing and validation in entrepreneurial firms journey. What are we doing as an entrepreneurial firm? We are providing a value proposition to the customer which is significantly different from what exists in the market. In general, whether it is an established firm or an entrepreneurial firm, every product has to demonstrate a value proposition to the customer. But in the case of an entrepreneurial firm, the value proposition has to be significantly better, significantly more demonstrative because an entrepreneurial firm or a startup is trying to seek an emerging market, it is also trying to expand the available market and in most cases is also seeking to create its own market. And what is this value proposition? Value proposition is a statement of uh, gains and benefits from a product for the customer both in the short term and also in the long term. What could be the types of gains one can expect from a product? The gains could be many, one could be the cost savings, second could be increased level of functionalities and third could be the revenue and uh, profits that have accrued from the uh, product, superior the user experience that is achieved and also simply the better esteem that comes out of usage of a product. And most importantly again is the higher level of safety that could come from a new generation product. But on the top of it an entrepreneurial firm tries to solve certain top level or high level programs, high level issues that a customer faces. We considered for example, the senior citizens and the entrepreneurial products uh, for them. They try to take care of the helplessness of the senior citizens they act as memory aids, they act as uh, safety uh, props, they act as reminders, they act as uh, caretakers. Therefore, there are certain high level uh, problems which a product for uh, senior citizens tends to solve. So, like that likewise every product which is segmented to a different market has got certain specific features and specific top level problems which it must try to squarely address. For example, when uh, companies like Nestle, Maggi and a host of others try to do ready to eat products, what did they try to do? They tried to solve the problems faced by people where both husband and wife are working and there are no elders in the family to take care of the day to day family needs. Therefore, they offered ready to eat foods, they solved therefore the top end problem faced by the busy working couple. Similarly, delivery food tech firms like Zomato and Swiggy, what are they trying to solve? They are trying to provide uh, for those people who do not have time to go out and dine, easy availability of different types of uh, food. They are also trying to package different kinds of foods from different restaurants at one go to a family which may have different kinds of stays. Obviously, six members of a family cannot go to six different restaurants and have their taste buds saturated. But by ordering food online, you are able to invert or converge different types of food preparations into one home through this mechanism. Therefore, there is a significant value proposition for the customer. Similarly, when vegetables are supplied and when cut vegetables are supplied, you can say that there is a significantly higher value proposition which is there when cut vegetables are uh, pro provided. So, when we have a product which is supplied to the customer through an entrepreneurial means, it has four types of broad benefits. The first benefit obviously is to the customer, he gets better usage, he gets higher quality, he gets it at a lower cost, 
he is assured of longer life and superior uh, brand value or the esteem value. What does the product entail in terms of technology? All these things happen. There are better materials that are used. The manufacturing process itself is better. The product is delivered in an agile manner. There is a longer or superior product life cycle and there is also a digital support in uh, today's digital world. So, these kinds of technical benefits which are embedded in a product get translated into very significant customer benefits which we have considered. When that happens, the society also benefits because as technology improves, people tend to use recyclable materials, people tend to use reusable materials, they tend to improve the input output ratio that is less materials for more output. There is also an effort to be globally competitive in whatever we develop and ultimately employment is generated when you have number of startups. So, when these things happen, a benefit to the customer due to the underlying or embedded technical benefits and that accrues to the society, the startup itself benefits. It is able to create a market or within the market it is able to achieve higher market share, it is able to post better revenues, better profits higher customer loyalty and brand building that happens. Therefore, a typical product envelope is just not meeting a particular uh, functionality. It is more a creation of an ecosystem around a product in which the technology is superior, therefore it benefits the customer, it benefits the society and therefore the startup itself benefits. Now, this testing and validation is an interlocked system. What is the difference between testing and uh, validation we will shortly consider, but there are uh, very significant inputs which come from the previous uh, stages. There are inputs which come from the ideation and prototyping stages which go into the testing. Then we have inputs from the testing and validation cycles which go into the specifications. How does testing happen? Actually many people think that testing is a very routine activity, it is probably not as important as design or uh, construction of the prototype itself. But on the contrary, testing is the most important factor in the journey of a product from ideation stage to the commercialization stage because testing is the stage which ensures that the product is manufactured and put into place based on uh, very stringent specifications that may have been drawn up. It also is a way to record the design output of a particular product into measurable uh, metrics against which the product can be tested and against which various other parameters like assurance to the customer, warranty statement, the service parameters, the entire life cycle costing of the, comp of the product can be developed. Therefore, testing is an extremely important and it is not a routine matter as one could uh, assume. And also as we go through the whole manufacturing cycle, we should also understand that testing is not an end stage activity. It is actually embedded at the age stage of design and manufacture. As you do the specifications, you are conscious of the materials you are using, you are conscious of the manufacturing process you are using and you know whether uh, this product will gel the way it is being planned to. Similarly, when you are doing the manufacturing, work in process inventory is tested, the manufacturing process itself is subject to various uh, tolerances and therefore, testing or the quality of the product is embedded into the manufacturing process. Regardless of all that, when the product comes out and is ready to be used into the market, we need to undergo a very formal process of testing and validation and that is very important because the basic product premise why am I making this product? Suppose you make a clock which is visible all through the night very, through very specific uh, uh, radiation approach. You got to really test it in dark nights, less dark nights, daylight uh, situations and see whether this product proposition is validated, is tested first and if it is tested and proven to be correct whether that whole idea of the product concept being luminous all through the night is validated that is also very important. Testing is very quantitative. You got a set of specifications like uh, the material should be of this strength, the product should be of this dimensions, the weight should be this way, the light uh, for example, if you are considering a light bulb, the lumens should be of this order. If you are considering a computer, the processing should be of this speed. 
if you are considering a camera, the pixels capability of should be of this order like that. There are very, very specific metrics which are associated with testing. But when we come to the validation stage, we are not only testing the product per se, but we are validating whether the premise which is underlying the product is uh, valid, whether the customer is buying into the uh, validity of the product premise. Therefore, it is both quantitative and also qualitative. Testing and validation therefore occurs at two levels in each case. If you see this uh, staircase, we have testing of the product concept. That is, we talked about a luminous uh, alarm clock which is uh, luminescent all through the night. Now, that is the product concept which you would like to test. But then you test the product that is up to what level of distance you are able to see the uh, light in the night. At what level of darkness can you see? Can you see it uh, when the alarm uh, rings or is any other functionality affected when you have uh, different kind of interventions which is happening in the alarm clock. So, that is the testing of the product. Similarly, when you have a light bulb which is attached to the ceiling fan, the concept is whether it looks glorious along with the ceiling fan, it adds to the decor of the house that is the overall product concept and also whether the shape of the bulb which is maybe like a candle, like a round bulb or like another uh, uh, chandelier, whether that is going along with the overall uh, uh, profile of the ceiling fan, that is the product concept. But when it comes to the testing of the product, you would really like to see what is the kind of uh, lumens the bulb is giving and when the fan is circulating at different speeds, do you find that the light is uh, differentially placed in terms of its uh, prominence in different parts of the room. That is actually the testing of the product which happens and also the connectivity between the electrical circuits of the uh, ceiling fan and also the electric circuits of the bulb whether it is happening in the proper manner. Therefore, you have the testing of the product concept, you have testing of the product. Then when you come to the validation, again you have got uh, two types of concepts. One, whether this product concept, whether it uh, gives an aha moment for the customer that is the validation of the product concept. But even if it comes with an aha from the customer, is it really going to translate itself into a good business? Therefore, there are four stages in this so called testing and uh, uh, validation phase. Testing of the product concept, testing of the product itself. Similarly, validation of the product concept and validation of the business concepts. When these four uh, sub stages happen, during the testing and validation phase, you can say that the product is ready for commercialization. Now, what are the principles of testing? The principles of testing are very closely aligned to the product itself. Each product has its own method of uh, testing, its own uh, protocol uh, for testing. For example, when you look at uh, software, the basically there are two types of testing. One is the alpha testing and another is the beta testing. Alpha testing is testing that happens at the development center stage, even as the code is being written and at the time of completion of the code. All the bugs which are there in the code are uh, uh, evaluated and then fixed based on certain automated as well as human testing procedures. But once that is done, it goes into the beta testing phase, which is getting tested at the hands of the customer. When you look at various portals, or various sites, you will find that this site is available for beta testing, which means that it is available for customers at their choice to be tested. And some customers may like to test it and provide feedback, whereas some customers may like to stay with the previous generation of the uh, site. Whichever way it is done, when the beta testing is done at the hands of the customer, the company gets valuable feedback from the customer and therefore, he is able to the developer is able to input all those feedback into the uh, program or the site. Similarly, when you look at uh, the software testing, there are uh, several modules of subtesting. There is a graphic user uh, interface GUI testing, whether the, the whole thing is being aligned in a proper manner so that the customer is able to appreciate the portal whether it is uh, being launched in the same manner in different devices, whether it is a smartphone or on a desktop or on a big projector. Similarly, whether the backend functionality is uh, maintained. So, there are uh, 
different stages of testing which are available in the software field. Similarly, when you look at the bulb, the testing is not so simple as testing the wiring through a multimeter. One has to really look at the strength of the filament and how, how many cycles, how many thousands of cycles the filament can stand, what is the level of heat which is generated when the bulb is uh, put in and how many uh, cycles of switching on and switching off it can seamlessly do and what is the color luminous luminescence which can come from the bulb and what is the level of blue light which emanates from the bulb. So, these are all the factors which could be looked at. Even a uh, product which is as uh, simple as uh, an apparel or textile has close to 20 tests which need to be performed like the strength of the weave, the color, the fastness of the color, whether the any of the ingredients of the color are carcinogenic, whether uh, there are uh, shades which are uh, not to the color palette which has been decided and what is the strength of the uh, knitting that has happened, are there any loose ends, are there any metallic objects left by mistake during the stitching process and what is the kind of uh, profile conformance that the uh, apparel has got. So, there are a number of uh, parameters which need to be checked during the testing phases, validation phases and therefore, uh, uh, although it is stuck away in the entire uh, scheme of things, it is one of the most important phases in an uh, entrepreneurial products. And it is very important that before testing takes place, the entire uh, specification set is frozen. This is particularly valid in uh, startup situation because many times the startups tends to develop on the go. They start with a particular product and we will uh, think about that uh, concept a little later and then they keep developing the product as the feedback comes forth. So, as established to let us say developing an automobile by an established automobile uh, engineering center, a smart watch which is developed by a first generation enterprise is likely to be development on the go. It is therefore, important for startups to realize that the entire specification set should be frozen. Secondly, this testing should be undertaken not only against the internal benchmarks, against the available external benchmarks as well. Because typically in any product development, a lead time of at least 1 to 2 years is inherent, whether it is a startup which does things in a very efficient and very effective manner or an established uh, company which does things in a very measured and cautious manner. There is going to be a lead time. By the time the product comes out as a prototype, it is quite likely that you have external benchmarks which have not been anticipated at the time of development. Therefore, it is very important for a company to test products not only against its own specifications, but in a broad manner against the competitive external benchmarks which are available as a measure of additional assurance. For industrial products, for example, earth moving equipment or for trucks or for buses, testing needs to be done not only by the company and its internal experts, but it also has to be done by external regulators. because such industrial products have got very important role in, uh, in economy and they can cause a lot of productivity enhancements or they can cause a lot of emission and safety issues in the environment. Therefore, testing has to be done at the hands of internal and external experts when it comes to the testing of industrial products. And when it comes to products which are extremely consumer oriented. You require testing definitely at the hands of experts who have designed it, but also at the hands of the customers who are going to use it. For example, you think of a uh, chair which has got uh, different uh, methods of lumbar support, different height uh, parameters. Obviously, it has to be tested not only by the experts, but also different uh, customers of different uh, profiles, body profiles, different heights, so that this chair with all its adjustments is very easy to operate and meets a number of personality profiles. Therefore, for consumer products an additional layer of testing at the hands of the users is very important. At times for testing, it is important to simulate the usage conditions. Typically a product is designed to last as we say a lifetime, but actually there will be a fit for purpose uh, design that is one would expect that product would uh, run uh, without any issue for let us say 3 to 5 years, let us say as a benchmark. Then is it possible for a company to 
test a product for 3 to 5 years is not possible at all. A truck for example is expected to run for uh, thousands of kilometers each year and at the end of the thousands of kilometers of run it is likely to have certain wear and tear. It is impossible for a company to do that kind of testing in real time. Therefore, testing is always done at factory level or at the development lab level through simulation. When we talk about simulation, we simulate the actual conditions that could take place on the road and then uh, put our product through those kinds of steps. For example, there are things like engine dynamometer, there is a thing called a chassis dynamometer where you run an engine, engine power pack, you run a chassis that is the vehicle and find out the kind of speeds they are encountering and when there is resistance, how do they brake, what kind of uh, fuel economy is being turned out, what kind of noise levels uh, are coming out. Therefore, whatever be is expected to be done on the road is simulated and those simulations can take place 24 by 7. Therefore, valuable data can be obtained upfront, mimicking uh, thousands and thousands of kilometers of actual field run. The other one is what we normally hear as torture track. Torture track is very specially fabricated or uh, constructed test track in which uh, it's, it has got all kinds of gradients, it has got all kinds of ups and downs, it has got all kinds of soils. While Indian roads themselves may be thought of as uh, torture tracks in certain seasons of the monsoon, etc. But torture tracks which are constructed scientifically help a company to simulate these kinds of uh, uh, adverse uh, running conditions or operating conditions very effectively. Similarly, you have uh, for uh, components various uh, vibration test modes, you can see how the pressures come and uh, how the pressures get relieved. For switches, you can have continuous 24 by 7 switching uh, methodologies. Therefore, uh, prototype testing is also innovative in the sense that simulation of the actual user conditions takes place at, at the hands of the engineers in the design centers. But then uh, how does uh, principles of validation differ from principles of testing? Principles of testing as I said is very quantitative, very rigorous against a set of specifications and it is a kind of go no go gauge. If it meets the specifications it passes, if it does not meet the specifications it does not pass. There are no grey areas and that is a quite black and white kind of analysis. Whereas in the principles of validation we are linking the empathy, ideation, prototyping and testing phases in terms of a set of quantitative and qualitative functions which cover the product functionality, which cover the customer experience and which cover the business potential. So, looking at the alarm clock which uh, lights up all through the night, let us say by uh, design or by default somebody has done it with a black color. So, although it may be functionally excellent and it may have the kind of luminescence when it happens, when it, when it, it lights up when a customer sees in the night, obviously the black color is uh, something which is uh, uh, antithetic to the whole uh, concept that has been developed of being visible in the night times. Therefore, the customer experience is likely to be negative. So, what are we trying to seek in this alarm clock and finally, what have I got? So, the empathy with which you have developed a product gets tested during the validation phase and when the validation phase says that both quantitatively and qualitatively this product meets the criteria, then it is available for exploitation of the business potential. I would also like to state that even if testing is not carried out at the hands of the real users, validation at least must be carried out with the actual users. That is because only through them you can get the qualitative feel of the product uh, and properly described. Additionally, we can also co-opt a panel of experts to make sure that uh, this product gets validated in the appropriate manner. A panel of experts is important because they give a detailed third eye approach to the product, something which the startup might have thought about when the product started getting developed. Therefore, uh, at a broad concept level, testing establishes the nexus between the specifications and the product performance, whereas validation est establishes the nexus between the product concept and potential business. Therefore, uh, there is a kind of uh, 
two level uh, hierarchy which is very important in this testing and validation phase which is very critical to business success. For industrial products such as uh, trucks, there is another layer which is uh, what is called a homologation which means that you not only have to meet the requirements of a particular customer or you not only have to meet what the technology says it can deliver but also you should meet the regulatory requirements of the country in which this product is going to be put. Similarly is the case with the pharmaceuticals or the meds. These are two product class categories where meeting the requirements of the regulatory authority is extremely important and it is also done on a product by product basis, it is just not just on an overall basis. And this process is called homologation which is part of the testing and uh, validation cycle and it is a very specialized term used for certain products where regulatory approvals are mandated before a product can be put in the marketplace. Generally testing is seen to be more in the quality domain whereas validation is seen to be more in the marketing domain but whatever it is, uh, it is a kind of quality assurance for the product and uh, if a company is using the concept of design thinking, taking the product on an end to end seamless basis from empathizing with the customer need to the final uh, delivery solution, it is uh, a kind of one uh, seamless uh, circle of development that happens. Now when we talk about testing and validation, we can have uh, uh, two types of hierarchy. The first type of hierarchy is about the types of products. Now, we cannot say that all products are the same. Different products have got different characteristics and therefore the testing and validation cycles differ. I would say some products are repetitive experience products. Now when we talk about a computer or a alarm clock or a camera, I would say they are repetitive experience products. That is uh, they act as standalone products. A computer has to display the image in, in a particular uh, milliseconds or nanoseconds of time, it has to have certain functionalities and whatever be the content which comes in, the computer has to perform in the same manner. So this is called a repetitive experience product, a watch is another classic example of a repetitive experience product. The second type of products are the variable experience products which means that their performance is dependent not only on them but also on a number of uh, other conditions. We can talk about an automobile. It is designed to be repetitive at one level but also it is likely to be variable in experience depending upon the, it is also likely to be different depending upon the type of fuel you are able to use, the type of road conditions you use. Therefore, there is a variable experience that comes out of the product. So these are uh, variable experience products. But as a product certain uh, uh, products or services are uh, variable experience in all ways like for example you look at a streaming service while the concept is the same that you subscribe to a streaming service and it uh, streams in the music or it streams in the uh, films but the experience the customer gets out of the streaming service is dependent on the content that comes through the streaming service. Therefore, there is a variable element which is inbuilt into the very idea of the product. Then the third one is the consumer perception products. For example, you think of a beverage which is a tea or coffee. The product may be made as per the specifications. The variability in the product can be minimized through appropriate package design and things like that. But still the way a consumer feels the tea is likely to be different de depending upon the type of tea or for the same tea different consumers have different experiences in experiencing. Therefore, it is very consumer specific. Although there is a broad generic category like a beverage, how the beverage is uh, tasted or expressed about is quite different between the uh, cons consumers. Therefore, uh, to summarize we have got three types of products, one is the repetitive experience product where uh, the specifications determine what the product is going to be in at the hands of the customers, how it is going to be perceived. Second is the variable experience product 
where the overall ecosystem also determines how the product is perceived. And the third one is the consumer perception product where uh, the consumer depending upon his or her mindset, depending upon his or her personality looks at the product in a different way, a fashion accessory for example. So, depending upon the three types of products, one can relate that whatever we have discussed earlier about the testing and uh, validation cycles and the methodologies, they have to be obviously different. Now, needless to say, if it is a repetitive experience product, you would need to have very significant level of testing based on specifications. If it is a variable experience product, you need to have specifications covering not only your product, but also the ecosystem inputs that go into the product. And if it is a consumer perception product, obviously you need to understand the consumer psychology in to a far greater extent than you would otherwise uh, care to understand. And similarly, the level of consumer involvement becomes highly different, highly variable depending upon the kind of products which you are uh, testing. See, likewise, you have another type of classification that is related to the nature of the startup itself because uh, startups have got certain approaches in terms of developing a product. Fundamentally, products tend to be fuzzy ideas. Fuzzy ideas means the technology is under development. What it delivers is uh, hazily known, but not completely known. And despite the best design thinking you may have, that is of empathizing with the customer, ideating as much as possible, finding out a solution for the product issue, it is quite possible that the products tend to be fuzzy and only when the development cycle is complete, you get to see the product coming out alive and in the manner which you have perceived. Uh, a digital watch where it has been developed for the first time that it would have a, a smartphone like functionality, but also have a watch like functionality is a fuzzy idea when the, the idea is thought about. Only when the development cycle is complete, one is able to see that a digital watch functions in this manner, it measures the activity in this manner, it creates its own community of uh, wellness uh, oriented users. So, these are all the developments which happen. So, a fuzzy idea gets converted. Similarly, when you want to have a health parameter in a digital watch, it is a fuzzy idea, but how exactly it gets converted and how effective it is happens to be frozen only when the development cycle is completed. Secondly, technology could behave differently in the real world. When we talk about technology, particularly things like uh, sensors, which are very much part of every new kind of product which is being developed, the accuracy with which you uh, measure the sensor movements of the body, for example, could vary depending upon the sensor technology. When you are measuring the steps, you got to differentiate between uh, body movements which mimic steps and actual steps. Similarly, uh, the sensor should have the ability to differentiate between what happens between uh, stair climbing and uh, let us say rapid jumping. So, how does the technology, the technology of sensors differentiate between the two? And to be able to bring fuzzy ideas into the logical conclusion, to be able to deploy the best methods of sub technologies, you need to have resources. Unfortunately, startups do not have all the resources for full fledged product development. So, herein lies the dilemma of startup product development that the resources are limited, but the ideas are exotic and esoteric, and the technology is sunrise, but not fully proven. So, the whole product plan tends to be a very dynamic document dynamic development as far as uh, startups are concerned.